Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure to be tonight here with all of you, because, well, as every show, we have prepared a lot of different things for you, and it's just a pleasure having you here in this cold London that we are, like, very, with a lot of snow during the last days, but, well, at least we're enjoying, and, well, it's time to forget everything, as Roya would say. It's time to pay attention to the Latin America show because we're bringing you the best of Latin America. And this is not a deception because, well, we're going to talk about a love story because we are going to celebrate St. Valentine's uh, on Sunday. So, well, it's like we're going to talk about a love story about two volcanoes in Mexico that maybe you didn't know that, but well, we have a fantastic story about that. And also, if you have been in Mexico City, maybe you have seen these two amazing volcanoes that they are surrounding Mexico, uh, well, Mexico City. And also, well, we're going to talk about something that is like quite um, interesting because it's yaje. Yaje is a special medicine that, well, you can try it in different parts of the world, but may, mainly in Latin America. And we're going to talk about what is yaje, that, well, maybe you will know as ayahuasca. Yaje is a particular name that they have in Colombia, but of course it's ayahuasca in the rest of the world. Uh, but, well, maybe you have heard about it. If you haven't, just pay attention, and because we are going to tell you what is the story about this ancestry uh, treatment that is more like healing and just to be more enlightened, enlightened with the life, etc. But well, uh, before that, and also, well, we're going to have music, music from Cuba. So, well, we have a fantastic artist. So, you are going to listen to this amazing music uh, from Yadira Ferrer. And well, before this, I, I don't know why it's appearing that, but before this, it's like, I would like to ask you to follow us in all our social networks. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and of course here on Facebook. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, please don't forget to put the bell there in order to know every time that we're uploading videos. All the previous shows that we had in the past, they are there. So you can go and you can know more about different countries, about uh, different traditions, food, etc. And I would like to say thank you very much to all the people that are following us. I would like to ask you, give us a like to the page and share this video. It's very easy. And as we have said, well, it's difficult times, but well, every like makes a difference. So thank you very much to Chef Valadez, that well, she's here with us, uh, Fabiola Valadez, Abhijit, uh, Gary, Liliana, Nahida, uh, Katia, Wal Katia Walters. Uh, well, thank you very much for all of you. Moises Sanchez uh, from, uh, from Cambridge, Cambridgeshire. Yeah, uh, Monique Lawrence. Uh, so, well, thank you very much, all of you. Please give us a like, give us a like and share the video. But well, before we start the show, I would like to introduce my friends, mis amigos, Roger Alarcón. Hey, hello, everyone. In this, actually, you stole my, my lines, Enrique, at the beginning. Only one. I always say that. Only, only one. Only, anyway. Only one. And I gave <laughs> anyway. you the credit. I gave you the credit, Roger. Yes, <laughs> I said, as Roger says. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, we are ready to have some good music, get ready for dance, and also get ready for a very nice love story in this lovely weather of London, which, I don't know, it's just, it looks like it's snowy, but it's not. Everyone is happy, but when you go out, nah, it's nothing in London. In some places, there's a very nice snow, but anyway, enjoy the program. Excellent. Thank you very much, my dear Royer. And on the other side of the world, literally, we have Whitney Nuchereno. Hello, Whitney. <laughs> yes, hello, everyone from Buffalo, New York. And we actually do have snow, like about a foot. Are you so showing off? I am showing off, but that's what we're going <laughs> for. <laughs> it's not really fun when you have to shovel it, although I didn't shovel it today, but I had to shovel it earlier this week. It was not fun. So um, be grateful for that. Anyways, yeah, um, happy and excited to get on with the show. Excellent. So, well, it's like, as I said before, well, it's like, give us a like. If you are joining us, uh, of course, well, it's like, uh, just give a like to the website, share this video in order that more people, they know exactly what are we doing here in this show. And also they can know more about Latin America. Also, if you have friends that maybe they are interested to come to the show and present some of the products, services, or they have a good story that they want to share about Latin America, please 
tell, tell them that, well, they can contact us here on Facebook. And, and of course, well, we are trying to bring you the best of Latin America. Also, it doesn't matter if they are here in the UK, in Europe, any part of the world. And of course, if they are in Latin America. Uh, and well, as you know, in the Latin America show, we are always giving prizes. So, well, is remember that we have a challenge as well. We have extended one week more because, well, they have asked us this. So, well, it's like we have a challenge that, well, now is like the second time. Don't put that face, Roger. But, well, they ask us to extend it one, one week more. So, you can go to the Latin America show events section and you can see the challenge that we have from uh, Art Peru. And, Latin, and the Latin America show, where there are people dancing there, a traditional dance from Peru. So of course you can go there and give a like to all these amazing people that they are doing their videos. If you haven't uploaded your video, it's time that you can do it and ask your friends to vote for you, give a like, and you can win different prizes. Like, well, for this challenge, it's like, the first prize is gonna be a dinner for two to collect from IU, our friends here in UK, in London, so you can go to this amazing restaurant because it's a Peruvian and Japanese mix. So it's just really, really tasteful. So you can go to Aiju and you can try this amazing food. Also, they are providing the second prize that is a virtual masterclass of ceviche, making along with another recipe. And this could be a prize global. So well, worldwide they can participate. It doesn't matter where you're based, if you are in Latin America, because this is a uh, through internet, so well, it's going to be this virtual masterclass, so well, you can take it, so you can participate, it doesn't matter where you're based. And also our friends from Do Natural Products uh, for skincare and virtual session is the third prize that they are giving a kit, and also they are going to teach you how to use these products. These products, they are applicable for people that they are based in the UK, in USA, and in Colombia. So well, don't forget to try this amazing brand of products, Do Natural Products. And also our friends from El Recreo, they are sharing with us two Spanish classes for beard, uh, for virtual with and virtual flashcards for children. And of course, well, all this material will be providing depending the age of the of the child. So well, it's like don't miss this opportunity if you want that your children they start knowing and learning a little bit of Spanish. And also, if you have some kids, well, you have the opportunity to upload the video of the kids uh, dancing this amazing dance and you, well, they could be the winner of one voucher of 25 pounds. So, well, don't forget that part. And also, I would like to remind you because, well, we are in this month that is, well, not this month, we are celebrating this week, the St. Valentine's. That, well, St. Valentine's is interesting because, well, here in the UK is more about love and it's more about your partner, but in Latin America is for friendship too. So it's for love and friendship. So, of course, we normally used to give presents to our friends, to, of course, our family, our relatives, and uh, sometimes our colleagues, because it's more about how we feel with them. So it's not about only love. So if you want to share this time in the Latin American style, you can give presents to all your family. And remember that, for example, Bacari, Bacari, this amazing organic chocolate, they are providing you a 10% discount from, well, since last week, till the 14th of February. And it's very easy. You just have to go to the page that they have and just to put the code uh, CUPID2021. And you will have this 10%. And remember also that, well, it's like uh, they have some uh, chocolate tastings. And one of them is going to be the 19th of February. So don't miss that date and use this code that is CUPID2021. Go and get this 20%, sorry, 10% off. And also our friends from Dulce Art, you can buy that, well, they are Alfa Jores. So, well, you can buy one and get one. So that's amazing because you can buy one to someone that is your beloved, but also at the same time, you will receive a present from our friends from Dulce Art. So don't forget it. It's very, well, actually it's very tasty. And I think so it's an extraordinary present for your beloved in this, uh, in this month or in these days that we are going to celebrate St. Valentine. So, well, it's buy one, get one free. It's very easy. Just go and visit Dulce Art. Dulce Art. So thank you very much to our friends from Dulce Art. And also, well, I would like to say thank you to all the people that they are joining us. Uh, as I said before, well, like we here we have uh, Mayel Sepp. That well, she's saying hi. Oh, sorry, it moves this thingy. Hi, uh, we are doing well, thanks. Ah, well, I think so she's uh, answering to someone else. 
Uh, I think so to Liliana, uh, Monique, Annalise is there. Thank you very much for watching us, Annalise. Uh, we have, of course, uh, we have also Yvonne that was just saying, looking to forward to hearing about Yahé and the Volcanoes love story. Uh, have a lovely Valentine's weekend. Thank you very much. Uh, Claudia Patricia Marin, she's saying, this is for music. What is this is for music? I don't understand. What is this for music? No, for music, we're going to have this cute, amazing performer that well, she's Yadira Ferrer. And believe me, it's just extraordinary. You're going to listen a little bit. Well, at least we have two of the, uh, of the songs. It's just extraordinary. And also, if you have seen, if you have watched the promo that we had, well, one of, the, of those songs is the one that, well, we are going to present tonight. So, well, it's like, thank you very much. Also, uh, Adriana Sanchez, thank you very much for being here. Dulce Valadez, uh, and everybody is promoting. Well, okay, promote Dulce, but it's not only promoted, buy some stuff from there, from uh, some Alfa Jores. So believe me that it's gonna be extraordinary. So, well, as I said before, share this video, please. Uh, give us a like, you are supporting not only the show, you are supporting all the different people that they are coming here and presenting the products, also uh, entrepreneurs like the ones that we were we have spoken before, like Pacari, Dulce Art, Del Recreo, uh, IU, Do Natural, uh, so all of them. So if you share this video, you are supporting all of them. And now it's time to go to a Spanish lesson with our friend Whitney Muchereno. Yes, just the first part for this evening. I'm just getting it up right now. Okay, so um, hello everyone. Welcome again to Making Spanish Simple. I'm just gonna move this a little bit so you can see. Um, last week we talked about days of the week, numbers one through 30, and we briefly touched upon the months of the year. Why are we learning this? I always feel like I need to explain this with students so there's some like buy-in. And when we make bookings, especially if they're not necessarily online, we have to know how to read, say, listen to day. So um, with that being said, I tried to post some images that I used last week into the chat and I couldn't, um, but instead of like going over everything again to avoid repetition, I just want to go through the months because we, that was something I introduced new last week. And then I'm going to show you how to save the date using them and everything we've learned. Okay. So these are the months in order from January to December. Um, they're not capitalized, that's important. Um, and here they are, you can repeat after me at home. Um, we have Enero, Febrero, Marzo, Abril, Mayo, Junio, Julio, Agosto, Septiembre, Octubre, Noviembre, y Diciembre. And those are the 12 months. I'll just go through them really quickly one more time. You can repeat after me. It's just like the vowels, the A, E, O, U. Um, so we have Enero, Febrero, Marzo, Abril, Mayo, Junio, Julio, Agosto, Septiembre, Octubre, Noviembre, y Diciembre. And like I said, they're not capitalized unless the months of the year, just like days of the week, unless they start off a sentence. So to form the date, okay, using these months, this is like the formula that you use, right? It's L plus whatever number plus day plus month. So L as, oops, keep skipping on me here. Okay, so L is means the, and de can mean of or from. In this case, it means of. So it's like saying the 9th of February is el 9 de febrero. Okay, all right, there you can see it a little better. So that's how you form it. L plus a number, so obviously one through 30, 31, plus de plus the month. So, and it's kind of similar to the British way because the British way you put the number first in the month. If you're watching from the USA, then this is a little bit different, but the European or at least the British way is normally this way, the number first in the month. So for Brits, this is a little bit easier than for maybe Americans. So tonight's show or today, because I'm in the States is El Nueve de Febrero. Okay, and I'm going to do what you shouldn't do. <laughs> I put a bunch of dates here so you could look and see how some of them are written. So you have, for example, 
Um, why did I put that? Oh, yes, because um, next week's show, of course, is El 16 de Febrero. Now, of course, in the Spanish language, there's always an exception to any rule, and it's no different with dates. So whenever you say the first of the month, you don't actually use the number one, which is uno. You actually use the word primero, which means first. And this is the only number where um, you have a difference in the number one and how you use it in the date. Everything else from two to 31 is regular numbers in Spanish, okay? So if we were to, and I've, I put some holidays on here in case you might have noticed. So if we were talking about Primero de Noviembre, the first of November, um, that's when the preparations are the, that's the Dia de los Santos and when they're preparing for Day of the Dead. We talked, we had a whole big phenomenal episode of Day of the Dead, El 12 de Noviembre, the second November. We have the, um, ¿cómo se llama? The Noche Buena, the El 24 de Diciembre, which is um, uh, Christmas Eve. And then we have Christmas, La Navidad, El 25 de Diciembre. And then El Primero de Enero is El Nuevo Año, the New Year. El 6 de Enero is El Día de los Reyes. And sometimes those preps start like the night before and everything. And then, of course, the holiday that we're going to be celebrating this weekend, El 14 de Febrero, is El Día de San Valentín or St. Valentine's Day. So my question to you is, okay, ¿cuándo es tu cumpleaños? When is your birthday? We're going to do birthdays. So put yours in the chat. So mine is at the top, very important birthday, es el 12 de abril. Okay, so when is yours? So using that formula, and I'll go back and show it to you again, of El plus the number, plus de, plus febrero, okay? Um, I'm gonna go back. El 16 de diciembre. I didn't ask you. <laughs> oh, you said not. There is a question mark there. Okay, fine, okay, fine. Um, Enrique, cuando es tu cumple? <laughs> and Roger, cuando es tu cumpleaños? 11 de diciembre. 11 de diciembre. Ah, vale. Y Enrique, otra vez, ¿quieres repetirlo? 16 de diciembre. Ah, muy bien. Ok, perfect. So, write it in the comments, and I will get to it in the second half of my segment if I miss some um, right now. But before I get to those, a couple other vocab words. Hoy means today. Remember, H's we don't pronounce in Spanish, similar to hola. Mañana is tomorrow. Um, and ayer is yesterday. So you probably won't, maybe might not use ayer that often, but I just like to give it, give you all the options. And then esta semana. So if you're making a booking, they're like, oh, cuando quieres ir, esta semana, this week. Or la semana que viene, um, next week. All right. We learned el fin de semana and whatnot. And we'll go over that in days of the week again. But that is the first half. I'm seeing some dates. So I'm just going to read them out now instead of in my second half. <laughs> we have, okay, el 23 de enero. Okay, yay, feliz cumpleaños for a little bit, for a little late on that. We have el 19 de septiembre. We have one in English. That's okay. Miss Whitney, Miss Whitney. <laughs> yes. Some of them, they are not putting in English. Sorry, in Spanish. They are putting in English. That. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's okay. They don't get credit then. <laughs> But, but you ha they have to put it in Spanish. They do have to put it in Spanish. But just because you ask something doesn't mean you get it all the time. Like, I ask that you don't interrupt my sessions. And <laughs> I'm just totally, I'm messing with you guys. It's fine. Um, here it is again, the formula, very, very quickly. And then we'll move on to our first guest. So it's L plus a number plus a month. We have a primero de marzo, 20 de diciembre, 8 de diciembre. I'm seeing lots of fall and winter birthdays. It should be el 24 de marzo, okay, y el 19 de septiembre, okay, perfect. Um, if I see more dates, I'll go over them so far, but again, just like um, one of our last dates, el 8 de diciembre, that's one of the, that's correct, el 20, el, yeah, 29 de abril, oh, another spring birthday, Liddy. And so that's how you do the date. So look at the formula, look at some of these examples, and that's how you can ask for dates whether you're talking about your birthday, whether you're making a booking, but dates are important, especially when you travel. So that's it for now. And the second half will be slang. So it'll be something for everyone. 
We have a lot of Sagittarius. I have seen. I have seen. <laughs> yes. I, you know, we have I, people from the wait, end wait. of November and December. <laughs> yes. Actually, I'm going to add that. If you like practicing your Spanish and if you're someone who is pretty competent in Spanish, but you might not be a heritage speaker, I use horoscopes all the time with my kids. So instead of reading them in English, you can go online and read them in Spanish. And it's a really great practice. You can do your love horoscope, any horoscope, um, just like you do in English, practice them in Spanish. Um, and then you can look up what your sign is in Spanish too. So that's just another tip and that's it. I'm done. The only thing I saw there is how many parties we miss, how many times in the pub. <laughs> yeah, I think so we have to make a calendar with that one. Yep. That's, that's a good idea, Royer. And you know what? Yeah, Roger, the, next time, next time that. just start asking, what is the name of your, of your pet, their first pet that you have? And later on, we're going to have all this database of all the passwords that they are having. Uh, <laughs> not anymore. Oh, yeah. People are getting smarter with their passwords, <laughs> especially with the pandemic and all the scamming. I don't think we're yes. going to get No, just passwords. be careful, everybody. Yeah. But with yeah. That. And of course, well, thank you very much, Liliana, that she's saying the Sagittarius, well, they are crazy. Okay, thank you very much. But well, thank you very much for everyone who is participating. I can see here. Uh, it's Vieta that, well, all the time she's complaining because I'm not pronouncing her name properly. Uh, also, <laughs> Martinez that, well, she, she said that, well, she's from April. Uh, uh, Annalise, Chef Valadez. Uh, I, I think it's, I think you can see if Advijit put his date, but, well, it's like, yeah, Katia, Fabiola Valadez, Liliana, Monique. Thank you, everyone. Ah, mañana? You said mañana? Abijit, is tomorrow your birthday? Yeah, ah, I can believe tomorrow. that. Uh, well, he's saying tomorrow, or he was just practicing maybe tomorrow. Anyway, yeah. so, well, it's like, hopefully, well, just clarify that party. If not, well, we can, I, I can sing the happy birthday for you. No, of course not. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to, to hear that. Okay. Anyway, so thank you very much, my dear Whitney. So, well, let's go quickly for, uh, for music. Who are going to listen, my dear Roger? Well, before we get into the music, let me read just a little introduction about what we're going to present we're going to present a singer and songwriter, Yadira Ferrer. She's a part of the new generation of Cuban voices. Her classic formation and the mix with the traditional sounds of Cuba complete her musical style. She began her life project with the best musicians. In, we are based in Spain, obviously Cuban musicians. And to wake up the interest of people, uh, she performed in several festivals and several places in uh, around Europe, being the voice of many groups and perform it all over the places. Her songs are a journey, the legacy and the future of the Cuban music. I just listened to her and it's amazing. And we're well, let's gonna listen En la vida, Yadira Ferrer. En la vida real. Oh. En la vida, 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 en la vida,
Very good, excellent. So, cheers, Yadira Ferrer. So, extraordinary music, music. Yeah, and well, of course, wow. but we got more about her. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I love it. And then, you know, it's just piano, an amazing voice, and a bass, and a trumpet. Amazing, delicious. I want to go out. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I just want to say, well, happy birthday to uh, to our friend uh, Abhijit. That well, tomorrow is your is your birthday, so well, happy birthday, Abhijit. So have a good day, uh, enjoy it a lot in this lockdown. I think so. Now, almost all of us we have had birthdays in lockdown, so I think so. You're just a couple of weeks more, and we are like everybody had a birthday during the lockdown, so that's amazing. So. <laughs> So, well, it's, uh, I think it's time to go to our first guest, and I think so, Whitney. Yes, you. definitely. Our first guest, Lydia, is the co-owner of, um, Ver I believe it's Verbal.com, a translation editing business, associate editor of LuxuryLatinAmerica.com, and author of the book, Mexico City Streets, La Roma. Additionally, she is in charge of Mexico City Tours and publishes frequently about all the beauty that Mexico, not just Mexico City, has to offer, some of which uh, she will hopefully share with us tonight. So welcome, Lydia. Thank you so, so much for being here. We're honored to have you, and we look forward to talking more about Mexico and I believe the volcanoes as well. That's right. <laughs> Hi, Lydia. How are you? It's a pleasure. I'm good. It's nice to see all of you. Well, first of all, it's like, how, where are you from? <laughs> um, I'm originally from outside of Chicago. That's where I grew up, like an hour outside the city in the suburbs. And okay. then 13 years ago, actually this month, February, I moved to Mexico. And I lived in San Miguel de Allende, which is four hours north of Mexico City for about four and a half years. And then I moved to Mexico City. So I've been here almost eight, I think. Okay, and, and why Mexico? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I studied Latin American uh, studies when I was in college, that was my minor, and my major was political science. So I really, I had a plan that I wanted to come and live in Latin America and use my Spanish and work for an organization and do some good in the world. Um, but Mexico really wasn't on my list. I grew up in a town outside of Chicago that has about maybe 20, 30% Hispanic immigrants. So I was accustomed to growing up with like Mexican culture on some level, and it just didn't seem that exotic to me so I wanted to go someplace that was really exotic you know so you wanted to dance you wanted to try yeah. Mexican food have fun <laughs> be chill um but then when I came to Mexico I realized how incredibly like like diverse and variable everything is the food in every region is different the music is different um and it's such a big country and there's so many things that you can see within you know just one country so I came to really love it. Now, of course, I'm a Mexico freak and I love everything Mexico. So uh, yeah, here I am. Well, and, and, and it's interesting that you're saying that because yes, it's like a lot of people, they think that Latin America is like a, the Latin American culture and that's right. it. But well, it's like Mexico has been invaded for, well, of course, for conquer by Spain. We have an invasion from France. Uh, and a, lot of, a lot of influence from France. Uh, also a lot of influence yeah. for the US later on. So it's like, we have been like moving from one country to another one, a lot of Chinese influence in Tijuana right. and all the Northwest part of the country. So it's like, uh, yeah, we have had like different stages and well, this kind of mixture and people that they move, uh, I think so from Dutchland, no, Dutchland, no, for Netherlands, from Netherlands, mm -hmm. they moved to Mexico also. So we have a lot of different kind of uh, mix of races, taste, flavors, etc. So while well, it's interesting. It's definitely a country with a lot of diverse history and waves of immigrants. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's been fascinating for me to learn all about the country as I've been living here these past 13 years. I really, I thought that I knew a lot about Mexico, but I really didn't. So yeah, it's been fascinating. I mean, I can't, I'm glad that I didn't move anyplace else. You know, um, I'm happy that I'm here and, and not in wherever. I mean, I've traveled all over Latin America and I love other countries in Latin America, but nothing compares to Mexico, especially Mexican food. So. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> well, actually, like, it, it's interesting what you're saying because, well, it's like, and I have to be very honest, some traditions that we have from, Me from Mexico and everything, even I'm Mexican, I grew up there and I lived there like 30 years, but it's like sometimes in this show, sometimes I'm learning something different and it's like, ah, yeah. I didn't know that fact in particular. I knew the story or something that, well, maybe at school, etc. And actually, I think so that Mexico City, it's, it's interesting because it's a city that is changing all the time. I think uh -huh. so that if you don't go to Mexico, for example, I don't go and visit Mexico in five or three years, it's completely different because they are yeah. like new, I don't know, new underground or these second floors of the streets or they change the streets, they change everything, new buildings, etc. So all the time is changing. It's really dynamic. I mean, it's, I feel like that's, that that's why I love the city so much. I always tell people that I feel like I'll never get bored of it. There's always some new neighborhood to visit. There's always some new place to discover. There's always there's always things going on. Um, I remember I went with my ex and we were in Buenos Aires and I walked around Buenos Aires for a couple of days and then I was kind of like, okay, what's next? You know, no, because no. Mexico City <laughs> is just never ending and you go anyplace else and it feels provincial it feels small you know and this we have this massive city here that's just like yeah it's so vibrant it's in motion constantly there's so many things there's you know there's agriculture on the edge of the city that it's just it's fascinating I love it I love all the subcultures like I really I've I think it's never endingly interesting well it's it's really nice to hear that uh, from a non-Mexican yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and of course, well, and also that you are very interested in our culture. And I think so that, well, it's like, as we are going to celebrate some Valentine's, yeah, we would yeah. like to talk. And also that's the reason why uh, we were talking before. It's like, let's tell to the, tell to all the audience, this is a story that we have about a couple of volcanoes in Mexico. So yeah, it's you. a good one. Um, I have to say that it's always like, this is one of my favorite stories to tell people, like mythologies to tell people. Um, I get a lot of flack actually from Mexican friends who are like, you know, that that story is not true. Right. But I am so, I think it's like such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful expression. I mean, it's like Mexico's sort of Romeo and Julia. Um, but yeah, I love it. But I do have to say, I do want to make the caveat. I'm not a historian, so I've done a lot of research about it, but I don't want to be put on the spot as someone who has to have all the facts exactly right. There are lots of versions of the story also, um, every, it seems like different parts of the country tell the story in different ways. So I'm going to tell you two of my favorite versions. It's not, they're not super long, so we can fit two in, I think. But, um, so outside of Mexico city, we have these two massive volcanoes. They're the two, um, second high, the second and third highest mountains in the country. Number one highest is the Pico de Orizaba which you can see when you're, when um, there's, a, there's a pass that goes through the two mountains between, and they're, they have very complicated names, which I'm probably also going to screw up, but I have practiced a lot saying them. So um, one of the mountains is called Iztaccihuatl, and the other mountain is called Popocatapetl, and they're both volcanoes. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know that Mexico's within the ring of fire. So we have lots of volcanoes everywhere. Um, and lots of mountain ranges. This is, uh, Popocatapetl is one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world because, simply because if it erupted, there are so many people that live below it that it would be like the greatest mass casualty of any volcano on, on the global scale or something like that. It's like up in the top five. So, um, so we have these two volcanoes that sit outside of the city. Um, they're actually outside of a smaller town called Ameca Meca. And it's about, I'd say maybe an hour and 15, an hour and 30 minutes away from here. You can still um, hike Itzatziwatl because right now she is dormant, um, but you cannot hike Popocatapetl because Popocatapetl is still, uh, it's still an active volcano. There's actually always smoke and gases coming out of that volcano. So. The story about the two volcanoes from Mexico City, the vision of them that you see, that you can see is sort of, it's that Cihuatl kind of has a longer range and is sort of like this. And then in the background, you see um, Popocatapetl. So the, the myth around these two is that 
the, the Tlaxcaltecas were a indigenous people that lived um, in what is now the state of Tlaxcala, which is slightly southeast of Mexico City. And the story goes that they were fervent enemies of the Mexica, the Aztecas. Um, and the Aztecas were never able to sort of uh, conquer them. And they were actually one of the reasons why the Spanish conquistadors were able to, um, to conquer Tenochtitlan because they formed an alliance with them because they were tired of dealing with the tributary system of the, of the Aztecs, the tributary system they had to pay money and resources and sometimes sacrifices. That's the, that's the, his, the story. Um, so the Tlaxcaltecas, the story is that the king of the Tlaxcaltecas, he had a beautiful daughter, Itzatzihuatl, she was the princess, and she fell in love with the greatest Tlaxcalteca warrior. His name was Popocatapetl. And he went to her father and asked for her hand in marriage. And her father said that if he would go and fight the Aztecs and come back victorious, that he would give see what he would give Itzatzihuatl um, to Popocatapetl. It's, the, the, it's, a, it's a tongue twister, all of these names. To Popocatapetl in marriage. They were madly in love with one another. So Popocatapetl goes off to war. Um, and there's a couple of different, like there's versions within the versions also. Some people say that there was an, a message that came in error from where from the, from the fighting grounds where he was. Um, my favorite version of this is that there was a rival lover, someone who was in love with the Tzatziwadl that wanted to ruin the romance. And so he came to Itzatzihuatl when Popocatapetl was out fighting and he told her that he had died in battle. And she's obviously inconsolable um, and sort of wanders around for days in her pueblo, not eating and crying. And eventually she dies of a broken heart. In the meantime, Popocatapetl comes back from war and finds his love with a having died from a broken heart. And he's also obviously inconsolable. Um, so he, he isn't, he wants to be able, he wants to honor her, their love that they had for each other. So what he does is he creates this giant funeral mound, basically, just outside of Tenochtitlan. He creates this beautiful mound of, and fills it with flowers and candles and whatnot. Some versions say that this was made from 10 different hills that he put together. Some people say that he just built like a funeral pyre basically for her. And he carries her body out into, out of the top of this funeral pyre, this funeral mound, and he lays her down and leans over her and promises to the gods that he will never leave her side. And so he stays there watching over her um, and the gods looking down on the two of them and feeling such pain for their own heartbreak for what happened to them, slowly cover them with snow and earth until the two of them become the two volcanoes. Um, now the lovely, I think the two things that I really like about the aftermath of the story is one, Popocatapetl, which I just said was still an active volcano. They say that the volcano is still active because Popocatapetl is still like his heart is still raging for in anger and in sadness over his love. And so that's why the volcano continues to have these small eruptions. Um, and then the other thing that I've read that I don't read everywhere, but I've read in several different places is that the rival lover that lied to Itzatziwatl was turned into the Pico de Orizaba, which is Mexico's highest mountain. Um, and if you are in the Paso de Cortes, which is between Popocatapetl and Itzatziwatl, you can see the Pico de Orizaba. The idea being that this rival lover, lover was turned into the Pico de Orizaba so that he could forever watch over their love from a distance and have the pain and the heartbreak of having to see them together in eternity, which I think is great. Maybe I just have like a specific soft spot in my heart for revenge, but um, I love that part of the story. 
Well, that was fair. That was fair. Totally yeah, fair. because he created gossip. No? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so he deserves that. Yeah. He deserves it. And it makes sense a little bit because the Pico de Orizaba is higher than the other two volcanoes. So it's the idea that they're there laying on the ground and he's standing watching them from a distance, unable to quite reach Itzatzi Wahoo, watching their eternal love, which I think is fantastic. Um, so then, 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 there's a, then there's a second version to this. There's lots of versions to the story, but there's a second version that I like, which is um, that Itzatzi Wahoo was the most beautiful daughter of Tetzotzomok, who was one of the leaders of the people in Azcapotzalco. And because she was the most beautiful war princess of Tetzatzomok, he and his wife were preparing to sacrifice her to the gods, which seems to me like not like it's kind of a shady deal. Like you're the most beautiful, so you have to be sacrificed. But regardless, they were preparing her to sacrifice her to the gods to make this offering to the gods. And her, in the meantime, Isatiwa and Popocatepetl fell in love. So they decide to escape. And as they're running from the palace, the guards shoot Itzatziwatl with an arrow and it pierces through her heart. And Popocatapetl picks her up and he keeps running. And he's running and running and running and running. And finally comes out to this open field where they're more or less safe. And he lays her down on the ground and he promises that he'll never leave her for the rest of his life. And then it's kind of the same ending where the gods look down on them, they pity them for their heartbreak, and then they cover them with snow and dirt, and uh, eventually they become the two volcanoes. So I think either story you go with, it's pretty romantic. Um, they, Isasiwatl, her name in Nawa means like this, the, the white lady or the sleeping lady. Um, and Popocatapetl supposedly means Smoky Mountain. So, I mean, their names are, they make sense. Um, and yeah, I went out to Paso de Cortes a couple of years ago to see them for the first time more up close. It's, you're still not super close. Um, and stunning. I mean, it's just stunning. And it makes you feel extremely small in the world. But they're really, they're just such beautiful features of our landscape. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the love story. So well, it's actually, yes, it's, it's, it's really nice and very romantic. And also it's like, yes, mm -hmm. as, as a, the moralist, like, well, don't be, don't be a gossip. Yes, don't be a gossip person, <laughs> no? Right, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. it's like, why? And also, if you're a gossip person, you're going to suffer and we're going to see the others uh, having their love or their success. Right. No? No, totally. I'm all about revenge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's only fair. No. Or apparently you don't want to be a beautiful person, as Liliana put in the comments. I mean, that could be the other moral of the story. Stay ugly. Yeah. Like, never, you're going to sacrifice the, the pretty one. So, yeah. I mean, there's a couple of versions of the story where she's going to be sacrificed and then they kind of go in a different way. But like, and everyone she's sacrificed and I'm thinking to myself, but so why do you, why do she has to be sacrificed just because she's pretty? Like, that's not really that fair, but I suppose they want the best, they're only the best of the best for the gods, so. Yeah, wow. so well, it's an yeah, amazing yeah, but, love story, yeah. <laughs> But actually, yes, and I think so that well, everybody that we are from Mexico City normally to is the Seawattle, we used to call it uh, the, 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 the sleeping, the sleeping, the sleeping lady. lady. Yeah. yeah. Like exactly. normally, it's it, La Mujer Dormida is the way that we know right. the volcano more than, more than is the Seawattle, it's more like La Mujer Dormida or the, the sleeping yeah. lady and Popocatépetl. Yes, that well, it's like basically, yeah. like, well, as you said, that well, it's an active, active, active volcano. That well, actually, it's like, um, but it's very controlled. So also for people that they are traveling, it's very controlled. We have a lot of uh, different ways that they are monitoring every day this volcano. Oh yeah, they're they constantly like, monitoring it. Constantly, it's it's very. I actually have a friend of mine who does. He studies environmental science, and he they have like a lookout like point on up on Popocatapetl because they're always monitoring like how much you know smoke it's putting into the air, or whatever. But yes, it, you can't hike. I had a friend who hiked you eat Tatsiwatl, which is difficult and very taxing, but it's doable. You could you can hike the that volcano, but Popocatapetl is, is off limits. So, but it's beautiful to see in person. I recommend anyone 
that loves volcanoes come to Mexico City and see it because it's or that loves landscapes because well yeah. they have an amazing last landscape from there yeah yeah so yeah it, yeah and it's it's interesting because you know here in the city obviously uh we have a lot of pollution that's one of the things we're famous for so you can't always see the mountains in the distance but every once in a while you get a peek of them on a particularly clear day and it's it's lovely you know yeah yeah, actually, it's, it's it's really nice. So well, and and I think so for people that they are traveling, I don't know. My favorite season in Mexico City is December, January, because you can see perfectly the volcanoes. It's like quite clean, mm -hmm. and you can see the shape. And also, well, that they have snow. Uh, sometimes, of course, Popocatépetl doesn't. You cannot see the snow because it's like quite right. active. Yeah, but yeah, this is the view that you can have normally December, January, February. That well, it's like I think so the main. Well, my favorite months to be to be there and to visit and to see it, Mexico City. This amazing landscape that yeah, it, it really. I mean, this it's really. I think people are always surprised when they come um, at how beautiful the landscape is here and how much nature there is in the city. And, you know, I mean, it is a megalopolis. Like it is a massive place to live, but there, there's a lot of beauty there too. It's not just, you know, a concrete jungle. It's, it's an amazing place. So. Yeah, and actually, well, I just want to say thank you to our friend Prome, Prome who appears uh, on Twitter, that, well, he provided some of these uh, images. So Thanks. thank you very much for mm -hmm. him. Yeah, that, well, taking these amazing I, pictures. I always laugh because the pictures of Popocatépetl and Nitsitsiwatl are, like, so overdramatic, and they always look like they should be on the front of a romance novel. It's just, like, you know, they're just, like, bare-chested Popocatépetl and, like, you know, like big bucks, some eat sassy waddle. And I mean, it's so, <laughs> it's so over the top and people love that. They love that imagery. You know, like that's what you see. I've been in restaurants where they have like a massive mural and it's that image, you know, yeah. like it's, that's part of, that's part of the flair of the story, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, well, Thank you very much, Lydia. It has been extraordinary in this story. And of course, well, as we said before, it's like, I know that, well, that well, well, hopefully you can join us many times here to talk about different traditions, different food in Mexico, yes. and uh, not maybe only Mexico City. Uh, I know that you know many parts of Mexico. Yes. So, and where people like can follow you because also you have blog and also uh, I have seen that, well, you have some articles. Yeah, um, I'm all over the place a little bit. My main, well, my main thing that I was doing until uh, the coronavirus happened was I freelance write and I give tours in the city. So um, I have all kinds of different tours. Most of them include some kind of food because I'm really into the food here. So yeah, I have uh, Mexico City Streets is my Instagram and people can follow me there and see what I'm doing in the city. Um, and you can get in touch with me if you want to do tours. I have a book that I wrote about my neighborhood when I moved here, um, oh which is, uh, we, we were going to be doing the update this year, but then obviously everything sort of fell apart. Um, so hopefully a new update will be coming, but it's kind of like a guidebook and sort of a history both to the neighborhood where I live. The Roma is really popular uh, with locals and with tourists. So it's got a lot of good information in it and some really amazing uh, illustrations done by a friend of mine. Um, so yeah, and I write articles for Mexico News Daily and I write articles for all sorts of things. I have a couple of big pieces coming up, one for the National Geographic. So you can Google me and find all of my stuff. I write a lot about Mexico City, but I also write about other parts of Mexico. Cause like you said, I'm traveling a lot and I've been all over the country. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit everywhere, but Mexico City is like where my heart is. So I do, I read a lot about the city. I actually, when I was like looking you up and, and, and looking at your website, I noticed a lot of that. So hopefully we can have you, cause I know we also have like more questions that we want to get into next time yeah. about your book and sit like neighborhoods in Mexico City, La Roma. Um, that really interested me. So we look forward totally. to you back to talk more about that specifically. Yeah, I'd love to, that would be fantastic. I mean, there's nothing I like more than talking about the neighborhood and the city in general. So yeah, anytime. Perfect. Excellent. So thank you very much. She's Lydia um, Carey. And well, thank you very much for being here in the Latin America show. And well, hope to see you soon, Lydia. Thank, thank you guys. I really appreciate you reaching out to me. It was really fun. And yeah, I'm happy to do it anytime. It was great. So thank you.
Thank you very much, Lydia. So, well, have a good Thank afternoon you. there in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cheers. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, bye Lydia. <laughs> so, well, it's like now you know this fantastic story about these volcanoes that is very big and everything and well it's like thank you thank you all all the people that they are like uh giving like different kind of commentaries about it pico de orizaba and also they are talking about uh well siltepetl uh, who is the pico de orizaba etc we know that well all the time is like all the names in nahuatl they are latl, tl, 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 tl. so it's like sometimes to be interesting to teach them a little bit uh, with me because it's like I very guess. difficult i know uh, i know a lot of people uh, like I, I know also mexicans that we yeah. have this issue that sometimes we cannot pronounce it properly yeah yeah i but know a lot of a lot of words in Mexico, actually, in Mexico City, we have a lot of words like it could be like boroughs and everything that they have, like like Tlalpan, uh, Xochimilco, etc. Well, that they are coming uh, from from the Nahuatl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's difficult, though. Enrique. Yeah. It's difficult, but tell it through. You 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 is, you don't pronounce it very well. <laughs> I have problems, but I have problems. Yes, correct. Oh, Thank you very much, my dear Roger. Yeah, that's a good support that I have from my friends. But anyway, <laughs> so well, let's move forward. It's like, well, we were talking at the beginning that, well, we were talking about this story, but also we will talk about something that is very traditional and it's, it's something that is interesting because it's a very old tradition that we have across Latin America. And well, fortunately, uh, we have the opportunity to talk with uh, two amazing people that while well, they have a place in Colombia near to Bogota, it's like one hour from Bogota. And while well, they have Villa Maria, that Villa Maria is a place that you can go there and you can try a medicine that is called Yajé. Or also maybe you, as I said at the beginning, maybe you have listened about that one that it is named also Ayahuasca. But what is this about? So, well, in order to know more about this, we have, a, yeah, this is the place that, well, it looks really, really nice. So, well, we have here two amazing people that, well, we are very lucky having Maria and Marta here. How are you, Maria and Marta? Muy bien, gracias. Thank you very much. Excellent. So, well, it's like, um, so, well, as, as we were saying, it's like something that is very, old is like a, an ancestry way for healing and and also it's like a, a kind of medicine so can you tell us a little bit the story about this healing treatment and and what is this about basically uh, so basically this medicine has been practicing has been practiced for at least 10 to 15 years 15000 years ago uh, by people from the Amazon, uh, the Incas, and then right before the Incas fell threat from, from the Spanish conquerors, they, they travel uh, through the Amazon and then they combined this tradition with the tradition with the Amazonian tribes in Colombia, Brazil, and Peru. And, and, and what is this about? So what is, it, what is this, um, this treatment or this healing? What are they looking for or what is this? Just to know a little bit more about. Yes, basically this drink is made out of two plants, yajé and chagropanga. Yajé is a capi, which is a vine that grows naturally in the jungle and the other plant that is a tree. And uh, it's cooked in the jungle for five days and five nights. Uh, for five we, days and five nights? Yes, so the person who cooks it has to be awake this whole time. And how many times do they have to drink this uh, medicine? Uh, when people do and go for ceremony, at least once a year to to gather all the healing properties. And yeah, and it's interesting because I know that in, in, in some countries is uh, prohibited, yeah? Uh, so, uh, so it's not allowed to have this kind of um, medicine there. So it's like, what is this healing about? So what is the main goal of, of this treatment? Uh, so people come to a retreat center because they wanna heal post-traumatic experience, I mean, experiences that 
uh, affected them from the past, which is, for example, soldiers who've been to Afghanistan or Iraq, and then they have these bad memories, and then they want to basically what the, the medicine does is to reset all these uh, past traumas and to leave it where they belong, which is the past. And oh, that's a beautiful garden. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, effectively, well, the medicine connects us to, it's, a, it's the bridge from, we live in the third dimension. So we jump to the fifth dimension where, where God, as the indigenous people, we believe uh, is where God lives. So we can get healed, we can get uh, messages to, to deal with this life that can be difficult at times. So it's like a kind of trance uh, in, a, in a certain way that people, they feel like in a different way after this drinking, yeah? Yes, and the messages can be received uh, in a psychedelic world. So you enter, that's how people call it, like they enter in the world of Jahe, which is, it is very, very colorful. And it shows us at times our, our own darkness and our own light. And we connect to our beautiful divine so we can have more an aligned life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a really deep, I mean, Western, Westernized people call it like a divine hypnosis or a divine meditation which is what the medicine induce these stages of consciousness. And, and, and also, well, these kind of ceremonies in the past, or, or not in the past, mainly they are provided by men. But I know that your mom is playing an important role in this. And, 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 and we are very flattered because uh, Do, uh, Do, Doña Marta is here with us. And well, you are like the, the first woman who you are like uh, leading these kind of ceremonies. Is that correct? Sí, que si tú eres la persona que lideras la medicina eh, en el mundo. Eh, 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 como mujer. Como mujer, sí. Y, yeah, so as a, as, as a woman, you are like the first one. Sí, sí, sí. And, sí. And, And, and what is the story? Why you become this? How do you call it? A uh, chamani or, or, or how you call it yourself? Or you are just like a healing, uh, a healer? How, do, uh, do you have a proper name for? Uh, abuela. Abuela del Jaje. Okay. Or uh, medicine woman. Medicine woman. Okay. And you know what? You're saying something interesting because you said like it's, it's called like the grandma of, of Jaje in a certain way or Jaje's grandma. And do uh, you know what is interesting? Because in Mexico, to, to this medicine, we call it the grandma, actually. It's like the grandma because the mushrooms, uh, that is the peyote, is the grandpa, we used to call it. So we have like these kind of differences between one and, and, and the other one. But it's like, how difficult or how Doña Marta start having this um, relationship with the yaje and learning about this medicine? Well, she's gonna tell you a story how she started with the medicine, and uh, I'll, I'll translate for you. Ella quiere, él quiere saber cómo tomaste el viaje por la primera vez. ¿Les cuento? No, tú hablas en español. Sí. Eh, yo me inicié a los siete años y luego seguí estudiando en mi, en mi escuela y cada todas las vacaciones participaba en las ceremonias hasta hoy. So you started, well, she started at seven when she was seven and uh, every holiday she was participating in the ceremony. So your father or some, someone in your family was the one who was like uh, leading these ceremonies before? Uh, there was a great grandfather of Jahe who was leading ceremonies and my mom, my mom heard that there was some people that they were going to go fishing. So she joined the group thinking that he was going fishing that day. So she told her grandpa that she was she was going to drink this in, I mean, that she was going to go and 
and go fishing. But what happens is that these, these uh, people that they were a large group of the family, they, they start being in a line uh, for, for a great grandfather of giving medicine, but she, she got on the line because they provide the medicine to the men. Men go on the one line and then women go in that line and they have this huge pot. And then when she came to the great grandfather, she says something like, little girl, what are you doing here? And she says, well, I'm here to drink medicine. And the grandfather gave her medicine. And then the next day they went fishing. <laughs> but she didn't know that she encountered uh, this, uh, this experience. So she, that's how she, she drinks jahe for the first time. And she says that the first time that she drinks jahe, uh, she saw the white magician. Do you remember the red and the uh, Lord of the Rings with the white magician? Yeah. That she, she holds a stick. And she says that she saw God in this way. As a, as a white magician, that's what she remembers. Uh, and then she, uh, her great grandmother was, her name was Santos. She was a mestizo woman and she was working with plants. And then, but all of, all of, all of her family come from a, a place named Cauca. And then Cauca is, is known for a lot of indigenous people who live there. So she grew up with, uh, so when her great grandmother, uh, her grandmother uh, died, uh, when she was born, her grandpa saw her and she says that her, because the great grandmother died when she was 42. Uh, when my mom was born, she says that he, she reminds him of her, of her daughter. So she she he he raised my mom he raised my mom, and then that's I think he thinks that she almost was like her her energy was kept in my mom's body, and then that's how possibly my mom would start drinking medicine. My grandma is very indigenous. She she's she belongs to a, we belong to a tribe named Inga, and they live in Putumayo, Colombia which is the south of Colombia, where all this part, where we drink jahe and all that area. And, well, uh, and, and it's like, well, of course she, she continued drinking, but also she continued knowing about the story and knowing about how to prepare it because it's not just mixing uh, <laughs> two different plants or something. So it's more like the preparation. And, and of course, following certain kind of, if you want to say it like, not rules, but it's more like a treatment, like the ceremony per se. Uh, and it's something that I just want to highlight that, well, there are a lot of people that, well, they are going and just trying to take this for fun. But we have to just to, 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 well, to tell to the audience that in Latin America, this is not for fun. This is not like a kind of trough. This is a medicine. So it's not like something to have just a good time. It's a medicine, mm -hmm. it's a treatment okay. that we have. And also it's like, uh, it's, 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 it's about healing, ceremony, beliefs, and it's surrounded by a lot of things. So also how people they have to prepare themselves in order to go to this ceremony. Uh, and this is, I'm gonna say to you in Spanish quickly. Uh, yeah. No, cero cero drogas recreativas, cero marihuana y cero medicinas como Adderall. Eh, todas estas medicinas que utilizan, eh, que son eh, derivadas del opio, que son yeah. ya sintéticas como la metadona, todas esas cosas es, yo soy la persona que informo a mi madre, o sea, hago una entrevista inicial con la persona y confidencial en donde sabemos que la persona nos va a decir si, 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 si ha consumido algún tipo de estas sustancias, porque, por ejemplo, en el caso de la marihuana, eh, bloquea, bloquea las, el sistema nervioso para recibir la medicina. Ok, so, well, just let me, uh, just summarize a little bit that, well, of course, it's like, uh, in order to take this treatment, of course, you, you do not have to consume any kind of other drugs. And of course, this is not for fun. This is not a drug that is just, uh, just to have a good time. 
is actually it's, it's, it's a medicine. We call it medicine. It's not a drug that well that maybe it could have different effects. But also people that they have smoking marijuana uh, or this kind of drugs that well they are like uh, synthetic drugs. Of course, they can block your brain in order that you cannot receive properly the, the medicine. And also you can have this spiritual journey. That is the main goal of this one. I don't know if I'm missing something with me from the translation. No, 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 no. no. That, okay. that was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you, missing, you, you, missing, <laughs> now, you miss one of the things very important. Ooh. The daughter, the daughter interview each individual because yeah. they need to know is straight yeah. away and strictly if they consume anything else because mm -hmm. the people who consume that as you say before Enrique it block the treatment it block the medicine so the treatment right. is not going to work so they have so to know what they're then, consuming like a history therefore of... therefore this healing could be complete so uh, in order to do that the daughter always is make sure for every each individual is being uh, questioned about all this stuff. Yeah, per, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like a, a history that you take, like if you're in a hospital and get treatment, it's similar to this. Yeah, good, good job, Roger. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you for thank that. You. So, <laughs> I, and actually, it's like, do you have to prepare your body in other ways, like well before taking the medicine, like I don't know, stop eating fat or to not drink alcohol in advance or something? Do you have a particular kind of preparation in advance uh, before taking the medicine? Uh, we, we basically focus on, on people not having drugs. Uh, okay. A lot of the Peruvian traditions focus more on the, on the food, but we really, we, we mind that, but not so much as much as people become more for for us it's very important to be authentic you know and that the first part of being authentic uh it is tell us about them you know it's okay if they do drugs right it's okay if they've done so many things in the past but once if they once they make the commitment to come to us that's when we prefer that they say well i smoke a joint two days before the ceremony so i can work things out with them right we we're not gonna give them medicine right away but we provide some vomitives vomitivos which are uh cleansing uh, they're clean the body and the mind before we get into the, the ceremony so some of the vomitives are names are joko and this this medicine is orange like my t-shirt and then you're pretty much vomiting orange and everything is orange for like 10 minutes and then that is allowed us to clean ourselves and, uh, and then be ready to, to go to ceremony. What, what people really confuse the medicine with drugs is because we really have, for, 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 for us, like a, it is a very psychedelic or psychedelic experience in which experience beautiful colors, beautiful things. So people, People, I think they, they, people, what is really interesting is that people go for this psychedelic experience. But, but what people don't understand is that the medicine decides if, if that's what they're gonna show us. Because if we don't really have an aligned life, that's not what the medicine is gonna show us. It's possibly it's gonna show us like more like in the, in the dark part. So, so it, is, it is very interesting that sometimes people get surprised like, oh, we really want to do ayahuasca or jahe because that's on our checklist. And, yeah. uh, but they, they really need to consider that part that it is not what we decide, it is what, what the medicine de decides for us, and, what is best for us. Yeah, and, and actually like you, you have, well, people, they have to be very conscious that, well, this is a, a, an experience just to heal something that you have very deep in yourself and you want to connect with that part, as you were saying, uh, passing to the, uh, from the third to the, to the, to the, to the fifth uh, uh, dimension in order to know more about yourself. So it's not just, just to chill and relax and have fun. So it's not about that. It's a, it's, it's a particular trip. It's something that we, 
uh, we are very serious with these things in that way. And, and actually one question here, the ceremony, because while well, we were seeing all this amazing place that you have that is Villa Maria, yeah? That well, it's like one hour-ish from Bogota, that's correct? Yes, it is about, it is 45 minutes, kilo, uh, 45 kilometers from Bogota. Uh, okay. when you When you get off the plane. Yeah, basically one hour and 15 minutes without traffic. So oh, we, okay. we offer picking up and, and you're right there very quickly. And these ceremonies, they are normally in Spanish or in English or it doesn't matter the language because well, they are songs or how do you manage them? Uh, basically, I'm always there to translate for people who are in need. And uh, my mom sings. Uh, she she uses the Inga language uh, for for some of the songs, and then we play the harmonica during the ceremony. The harmonica okay. is it's... important for us. Okay, so and, and actually, like I have a question here from the public: Is this is something that it could be dangerous in a certain way? Then the playing the music or the no, the taking the medicine. It is not with the right preparation, as I said to you before. We we have a we, fa we have a questionnaire uh, that we do over the phone, and then if we feel one hundred percent if the person is right for the medicine, uh, we allow them to come. And also, when the person arrives to a retreat center, he feels a form that he, the person has the knowledge that that we that the person is drinking the medicine. But basically, no. Well, my mom, as you know, my mom is a nurse. So she she has like an understanding of the human body. And uh, she, she can see when people have done drugs and they come to a retreat. So I am learning that. So we see and we, but there, we determine that they, if the person is, is good to drink and do the retreat. Uh, but other than that, no, it is not dangerous. It is dangerous. It is not dangerous because we provide good quality of medicine, which is the medicine is cooked for, for my mom's cousin. Now he's 65 years old. And, uh, and it's very safely cooked. Uh, we don't add anything. Our retreat centers, I heard they add other things and that's what it makes, makes, it, makes experience. So, so this, is, this is one thing that happens that is, it is very important to say. A lot of retreat centers, uh, anywhere else different than us, uh, because people have, people many years have these uh, drugs in their bodies or things that they haven't cleansed. Uh, what they notice and because people choose to have medicine because they think it's a drug and they go just for the psychedelic experience. So they add another plant named Datura, which is very dangerous to the medicine. But, what, when they add the datura, it makes the brain, it, it makes the brain have more like a psychedelic uh, experience, but you can die when you, you add more things that you're not supposed to in the group. So we're very serious and we're very careful uh, with the medicine. So we only get the medicine from Pacho, which is our, our dearest cousin. So we're always very safe. So it is very important. Uh, the place is very important where we drink medicine. So this place uh, is sacred. It's a healing place. It's, a, it's not a resort. Uh, we have certain rules that people need to like uh, respect the ceremonial day. They, mo most people dress in white, but they have to like women and dress like in, I mean, like in long dresses and men dress like properly. And uh, so we believe, so, so we no, believe no, no. that the place, the place is very important where we drink medicine. Uh, the person who provides the medicine has to have lots of years with the medicine and, and the, the type of, of the medicine that we provide. It is very, very important. So that's what it makes the, our place very safe for, for the people well, to go. And and, and, and I think so that that's very good. And also, well, we have the images about the place that, well, it's like a, just an extraordinary to be there in the middle of the jungle, if, if you want to say, well, with a lot of forest around. 
And just one question that we have here also from the audience, and it's like, are there are these ceremonies um, linked to a particular time of the year or a particular season or related with the moon or something like it's, it's the best time to take this medicine X days or during this season? Is there something like that? Uh, we usually, la, la, la ceremonia es mejor con la luna llena. Mm. So full moon. Full moon. It's like, it's, it's like the best time to, to take it. Sí, con la, okay. la luz de la luna para, para sanación. Okay, so well, it's like, and actually, I think it's very interesting and just to highlight that part that, well, this is not uh, something for recreation is uh, it's just if you are looking to know more about yourself or to healing some of these kind of um, traumas that maybe you will have I think so Villa Maria is an extraordinary opportunity to go for a treatment there to go there for a certain time and enjoy this amazing place knowing more about the medicine and and of course well I would like to say Thank you very much to Doña Marta as well, and, and congratulations for doing this amazing job. Yeah, that is extraordinary. And, and also, Maria, uh, well, thank you very much for being in touch with me. And uh, of course, well, we're discussing about this for a while. So it's like uh, we're honored to have you here. And of course, well, inviting people that, well, where they can find more information about Villa Maria. Uh, well, our place, our place is known as now as Ayahuasca Healing Center, Colombia. You can find our our site, and uh, you can find more information also about our products uh, directly with the with the site or with me. And uh, okay, we, that's... we will be to have you guys someday. Ah, well, that would be fantastic to go there, actually, yes. And well, and I, I think so that also we have a lot of different things that maybe in our occasion we have the opportunity to talk, uh, Maria, that we discussed before, that about the different products that also you are producing and everything that you are doing, that they are very natural, organic, like the oils, like all these things that you are doing nowadays, because I know that you are uh, an, an entrepreneur that, well, you are developing new things. Sí, sí, sí. I mean, for instance, we... My mom, my mom has been able to grow uh, beautiful plants at the retreat that they grow at the same time, at the same time in Putumayo, Colombia, in, in the Amazon. So we make beautiful like perfumes and fragrances for, we have the potion of love that it creates when the women wear it, it actually activates the pheromones in men. So basically this allows women to meet the perfect partner. Oh. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. sorry. <laughs> you guys are, all, you know, you guys are always welcome to, to see us. You know, uh, we grow nat natural things. You know, during the pandemic, we were not working at all. So we focus more on like uh, making these beautiful potions and for, for prosperity, love. And uh, para novio, novia, and uh, people like it a lot, a lot actually. Uh, what happens is that changes the vibration. Uh, so you, you attract the right partner or the right people into your life. And, and it's really good. Well, that's, that's, that's very it. nice. And actually, it's like uh, just one question because, well, on Facebook, I had you like Centro de Sanación Healing uh, Place Villa Maria. Is that the one? Is that one the correct one? Just to share here with the yeah. audience, because I have that one on Facebook, but I don't know if, if you can share with me uh, the link in order that I can put it here in the comments, in the comment section. Right, right. Yeah, the right place. That one connects you. What happened is I lost my Facebook, so I, I don't manage, I cannot manage that, that unfortunately. Ah, that one. That anymore. That one is active, so people yeah. still call me through an old phone, but the, the most active is ayahuasca, Healing Center Colombia. Okay. Okay. So while well, we're going to share all the details here in order that people they can know exactly how you can find them. Uh, and of course, it's like a, a good opportunity uh, if you if you would like to try uh, a different kind of treatment that I think is a fantastic opportunity. So thank you very much, Maria, and, and thank you. If you can 
if you can share the, 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 the contact details um, there in the comments, uh, my dear Roger, that could be wonderful. Very good. Uh, my mom wants to invite you. Thank you. We will take you up. Trataremos de hacer lo posible por ir con gusto. Sí. Vamos a estar ahí. Muchas gracias. Aquí los esperamos con mucho amor. Gracias. Que nos vengan a visitar. Oh, muy amable, ¿Sí? muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, gracias. Y, y bendiciones, cuídense mucho. Sí, cuídense mucho. Thank you very much. Ok, muchas cheers. Gracias. Chao. Nos vemos. Okay. Bye. bye bye. Gracias. Bye. So, bye, well, bye. you know, you know now more about what is ayahuasca, what is yaje. Uh, so, well, it's a very interesting, um, a very interesting medicine in, In Colombia, so well, but you know, it's more like uh, finding yourself and it's more like just to understand and to heal some of the traumas that maybe you can have. So it's really good. So, well, it's like uh, now I think so. We're going with Whitney and Chirino, I guess. Yes, we are. I'm going to just ask you guys to mute your microphones. <laughs> oh my God. And by you guys, I mean in UK, really, but. <laughs> I think the teacher, the teacher is telling us, shut up. Yes, that's my American way. We can't just say shut up. We have to say it in a very nice way. Okay. Um, all right. So guys, this is going to be really quick because I know the first half was more than a half of the segment. So um, in past weeks when we featured more topics from different countries, I've kind of taken slang from those countries and kind of like paired it together and did like a compare contrast. But this time I decided to do something new and do new words from each country. So these aren't necessarily just like the first one here is not just in like you here in Mexico, but the first word aguas is the one that I want to do. So we're going to start with Mexico. And again, this is not just spoken in Mexico, but um, I thought of it immediately and it means watch out. So agua actually means water, okay? So apparently, and again, there's like, as we learned tonight um, from the legend before, there are multiple versions of legends. I mean, like still no one to this day knows how mole was actually invented. There are at least like two or three legends. So one of them with aguas is that in the 18th century, people used to dump out their toilet water in the street. So they'd say agua or aguas, like watch out. And that's what it means, like watch out. Um, fresa, I like this word because, um, okay, so una fresa, it can mean one of two things. It can mean um, strawberry or in slang, it can mean like someone who's maybe a little snobby or rich. In Spain, we call this una persona pija. Um, and then <laughs> I hope you're pointing to me. Are you pointing to me? Stop. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you. Much better. And then we have naco. Um, una persona naca is like someone who's tacky, who doesn't really have lots of class. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't, I can't look at your screen right now. And then metiche is a nosy person, like someone who just always like butts in, which I'm not, no pointing Roger. <laughs> um, and then from Colombia, <laughs> Guys are cracking me up. Okay, cambiar de disco. This is a way of saying cambiar de tema, like to change the topic. Okay, cambiar means to change. So it's just an expression that they use here. I'm gonna like shift this over here for a second so you guys can see a little bit better. Okay, lobo loba. So if you're a fan of Shakira, you might have heard the song loba, which is she wolf, because lobo means wolf. Um, but it can also mean something that someone that's trashy or tacky. So very similar to naco in, in Mexican. And then we have parcero, parcero. We talked about um, parce being like, you know, it could be like that. We've seen this word before in parcero, parcera, you have like, you know, um, it's kind of like referring to a guy or girl, like dude or bro, or I, I mean, it's not really a word I use. So that is um, a way to say that. And it's like how you address your friends, right? So you may even hear it as like parse. And it's similar to like my, which we learned last week in Costa Rican slang and way from Mexican slang that we also talked about last week um, for people addressing their friends. And then parchando comes from the verb parchar. Parchando is what we call a gerund, like hanging, um, pasando tiempo is parchando, which is like, hanging out with your friends because 
a while back, I don't even know when, um, but uh, we talked about how Un Parche is a group of close friends. So it comes as no surprise that um, Parchando is um, to hang out with your close friends. So for more Spanish, whether it's beginner, intermediate, advanced, go to my website, subscribe, um, makingspanishsimple.com. And on there, you have all the links to my um, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. My YouTube is the most active. So please click the YouTube and subscribe there because I have the most videos there. But for articles and other um, things, you can go on the website for that. Okay, just the 12 is like a, a, two things there. It's like, a, if you go to Mexico, don't say parchar. Uh, I think so that could be a bad word. So don't say it. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Don't <laughs> say it. Yeah. Don't say it, okay? Yeah, that, that's that why one. I put it on different yes, pages. It's like, I didn't yes, put it. don't say it. I don't ask why. Don't say it. Um, <laughs> wow. uh, no. And the other one is like, well, um, that you were saying another word that, it, okay, well, knack on everything. It could be very despective. I think so that here is something very interesting to understand. The Mexican culture, it's, and the Latino culture is quite different in that way compared with the UK. For example, we used to use uh, things that, well, I don't know, for example, uh, someone like my mom who loves me or something, she can call me uh, negro or negrito. No? Yes. Like, well, it's like, uh, it could be offensive in English, for example, yes. very offensive. In Spanish, it's a very sweet way to call someone, yeah? Uh, so, Understanding the culture of Latin America, because actually that happens across all Latin America, most of the countries that well, negrito, negro, mm -hmm. that kind of words, they are not offensive. Uh, it's not a racist thing. Actually, most of the time is in a sweet way. Of course, well, it depends on the tone, but, uh, but yes, but um, yeah, that could happen with naco also. Definitely, it's yeah, it's always- Very offensive. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. it's good to know that, and, and it could be like the two extremes that, as you were saying, fresas and nacos, no? like the mm -hmm. posh side and the, the side that is like not. But it's true, good. yeah. And some yeah. of the names, like you just said, negrito, even like gordito, gordita. It's gordito, not gordita. Like yes, like it's like yeah, chubby, like, no? I've like heard chubby, people but it's in a sweet like, way. Skinny people, and it's just it's a term of endearment. It, it and if you say that in English, you'll probably get slapped. So yeah, also it's like that's, also that's, it's that's why that's why Latin Americans we are so sweet regardless of the word. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and, and really <laughs> weird. And, and we use the words in a in a really weird way because also there's like if you go to the street markets in Mexico, to me, the merchant can tell me something like, "Hey, you blondie, 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 that is güero," no. <laughs> Uh, or, or the guy so. who is preparing tacos, they are telling you blondie, uh, even we are not blondies, but they used to call you like that. It's, it's a sweet way. It's just to get your attention and it's not in a bad way. So it's like, don't take it like personal when you have like these kind of translations uh, from English to Spanish. Uh, you have to understand a little bit the culture about all the things. Ah, uh, Of course, well, it's like Jaja, she's saying, she's saying like viejito, viejita. It's like a viejo, it could be offensive, like old man. But also it's like more like, yeah, it's in a sweet way. I don't know how we use these things, but well, it's like, yeah. Well, that is Latin America, that is Mexico so well. It's good that you are in this um, in, 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 in this show just to, to understand a little bit. But well, it's like, it's just time to go to music. And Roger Alcon, you have uh, another song. Yeah, of course, we have another magnificent song. So this one, let me pronounce it very well. Chivo que rompe tambo, de rompe tambo. It's an tambo. amazing song. Just tambo. Tambo. No. tambo. Yeah, because you have the, the, the accent, accent at the end. Oh, yeah. Let's hear about it. And if you're ready, let's yep. go. Yo habla con John Francisco. A ver qué rayo pasó, que están todos los chivos sueltos y yo he encontrado roto mi tambo. Ay, mi tambo, ya se rompió. Ay, mi tambo. Yo mañana. 
mañana voy a ver a Juan Guabeto porque aquí todo el mundo se hace los muertos y le voy a demostrar que si cuero está rompido no se puede templar. Ese chivo corrompido está agachado en el mismo caserío y yo lo voy a encontrar y lo voy a buscar. Yo lo saca de donde está escondido. Si lo cojo, chiquitifuá, chiquitifuá, chiquitifuá. Coge chivo, patillo, pestoso, berrenchín, ay, chango, que esta negra ya no puede vivir sin su tambor. Yo está que tan mi voy yo. No gusta matar ni mal, porque yo soy negra buena hija de orula y de yemaya. Si lo veo yo lo cojo y lo amarro y le rompo toitico los tarros pa' que aprenda otra vez que el tambor que negra toca no se puede romper. Ese chivo más su camba se ha creído que yo vengo de Ampanga y yo le conozco bien, yo sé de ese chivo, ese chivo, ese chivo es la Miranda. Si lo cojo Chiquitifuá, 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 coge chivo, patillo, pestazo, berrinchín, ay, chango, que esta negra ya no puede vivir sin su tambor. Chivo que rompe tambor con su pellejo paga. Chivo que rompe tambor con su pellejo paga. Y lo que es mucho peor que en chilindrón acaba. Y lo que es mucho peor que en chilindrón acaba, chivo que rompe tambor con su pellejo paga, chivo que rompe tambor con su pellejo paga. Y lo que es mucho peor que en chilindrón acaba, y lo que es mucho peor que en chilindrón acaba. Well, she is Jadira Ferrer, and well, of course, yeah, it's just an extraordinary singer, a Cuban singer. So, well, it's like a, a try. It. You can Google it. You can look on YouTube. Some of these videos that well, she has is an extraordinary singer, and well, hopefully, she will be here with us soon in order to tell us more about uh, all her career. And well, it's like interesting because well, Lily Martinez, that well, she was saying that well, if you want to increase your self-esteem and just to feel better you can go to the street <laughs> markets in mexico because of course in order to get yeah. your attention they are going to tell you all these kind of sweet things yeah. and they are going of course to tell you like nice compliments in order to get your attention like guapa no eh, bonita joven also they are going to tell you like young man no sometimes young man young man yeah here it's like yeah <laughs> so you are going to receive a lot of compliments especially Especially okay, for you, on. Enrique. That's a compliment. I know it. I know it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Thank you. you. You really think you have a very good self-esteem because you really think that you look younger. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> so, well, it's like just a quick, quick question for the audience. How many years Roger has? How many years I am? That could be <laughs> yes, not sir. now. Sure. Not now. Not now. That could be good. So, well, just put there. Yeah, R yeah, yeah, X number yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Years, me. Okay, yeah. Anyway, so thank you very much. Well, you have learned a lot of things about Latin America today. We, we, we have to talk about Mexico, about Colombia, and, uh, well, Whitney, please. Oh, sure, sure. okay. So I'm going to spoil the next show before Enrique can. We are going to talk. We obviously have a um, music and a wonderful singer who's going to be joining us. And we're also going to be talking about sports and um, sport athletic tourism um so stay tuned for that i'm really excited and um yeah so 
please come join us. And there's something for everyone because we have a, um, a singer coming on and doing an interview as well. So I will see you next week and I look forward to it. And we're going to have the challenge also. We're going to have this challenge. So, well, it's like online, you can vote. Of course, well, it's like I know that, well, nowadays it's like, well, um, please give them a like. You have a lot of different things. I love, I'm sorry, a, a lot of different videos. So please go to the event section of the Latin America show. The last one that is a challenge for Art Peruque and the Latin America show. There are some videos there, give them a like in order that they can win these extraordinary prizes. So well, it's like which prizes they can win. So well, do you know that well, our friends from IJU, well, they have a dinner for two uh, to collect that is applicable for people that they are here based in London. Also a virtual masterclass of ceviche making along. Uh, with another recipe that is a global because it's a um, virtual masterclass. So while well, you will have the opportunity and also the natural products, uh, they are going to give uh, a kit and also a session about how to use them. And this is applicable for people that they are based in the UK, in USA, and also in Colombia. And also remember that our friends from El Recreo, they are giving two Spanish lessons, uh, a virtual Spanish lesson and flashcards for children. And, and all this material there is going to be uh, given depending the age of the children and also if they are children that they are uploading videos there uh, dancing while well, we have you have the opportunity well your children they have the opportunity to win a 25 vouchers uh, for that category in particular and remember if you are going to celebrate some valentines well remember that pacari is offering 10 percent of discounts till the 14 14th of february you have to only use the code CUPID2021, and you will receive this 10% of discount. And also, if you want to know more about how to try the chocolate and the different tastings, remember that there is like one that is going to be celebrated the 19th of, uh, celebrated the 19th of February. So well, this is, keep in mind, and well, of course, you can book it also with Pacari. And remember that our friends from Dulce Art, if you buy one, you get one in all the in the Alpha Horus that they have for you. So don't miss this opportunity. So well, I think so. It's uh, ha, ha, fifteen and thirty-five. I think so that they are saying that I'm fifteen <laughs> and yes. you're Royal yes, thirty-five. No, 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 no. no. But no. anyway, no, you're it, doesn't <laughs> it doesn't I'm matter. It doesn't matter. It's still. It's, it's good, but well, it's like of course. 15 and okay, come on. So, well, well like, um, Maybe so remember, you act like you're 15. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> twice. Let me, and in Enrique's okay, now it's on mute twice. Whitney, she is not going to talk any longer, she is on mute now, so uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Let's drive. all right, anyway. So, well, it's like just a uh, thank you very much. We need Nuchereno. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah. We have events. Yeah. We have events. Yeah. Events. Roger Larcon. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Yeah, well, I nearly forgot it. It's just you want to go. Our friends of Latin Indian events are inviting us to the Barranquilla Carnival by Children Change Colombia Charity. What it is, it's a dance class with the very special guest is the dancer Fernando Montaño, which is part of the Royal Ballet soloist. And you have all the, I'm gonna post all the details where you can get the tickets. It's a five pounds ticket, and it's gonna be a donation for a good cause. So I will post this later on the Facebook page. And Excellent, so, and you know that next. Fernando Montaño, he was here. Yeah, he was yeah, here in the show before. So he was here in the show next, before. And next what? No, 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 what no, no. you were saying? A part of that no. one? No, no, no. Oh, it's okay. because I, it's because you're saying goodbye. Well, okay. No, I no, sorry, Winnie Nuchereno. Oh, I get to say go goodbye again. I thought I'd be muted. All right, see you guys next week. Looking forward to the show and go out, have fun in the snow, and um, we'll all celebrate um, Abby Jeeb's birthday tomorrow. I think he's hosting a party, right? Right. <laughs> Anyways, I, don't know. I think so. I he's think... going to send. I think so. He's going to send yeah. presents. He said that that he's going yeah. to send the booth. Uh, <laughs> so well, yeah. remember to to send 
to send him <laughs> your address and thank you very much Abhijit for the drinks. Yeah. Okay yeah. Abhijit we are we when we open down this lockdown we do we you invite us. No 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 he can send the, he can send the drinks yeah. don't worry don't worry, don't worry. as well as well as well as well, ah, as well. Okay. we need yeah. parties we need parties after this lockdown don't worry believe me there are going to be thousands of them but anyway Roger Alarcón well I enjoy this show so much anyway see you next month next month next month no <laughs> see next you next month one. the next, next one ah I can't oh. see you next month I thought so, that uh, too. Next so okay, so I think so you said that. Anyway, <laughs> so well, my birthday is December 16, December 16. So keep in mind, not, remember, hey, not, we oh, need to put it in important <laughs> dates. Put it in important dates that you put there. Like remember, like well as you put the uh, Christmas, etc. Put December oh 16. Gosh, also, that's that. a little I, like, as, much. as long as it's not <laughs> locked down in her in his house. Yeah, party. the next birthday between the three of us is mine. So el 12 abril. I like champagne, flowers, what else? <laughs> we will still in lockdown, don't worry. Uh, so we cannot <laughs> celebrate it. In December, everything is going to be open. Yes, we're going to have the vaccine. Yes. So we can celebrate in December, no worries. Anyway, so thank you very much, everyone. My name is Enrique Gelista. Remember that the Latin America show is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. London time. So see you next show, next Tuesday. And well, have a good week and just keep safe. And uh, now I made a mistake here. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the right one. Yes, yes. you can laugh. You can laugh. <laughs> it's good that I don't have weird pictures or something. We're there. Yeah, yeah so I know. Imagine. That could be terrible. Anyways, <laughs> this is the Latin America show. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>